Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crafternoon. We are going to get started today a little differently. I am going to throw a poll out there for a question of whether you like butterflies or frogs better. And trust me, it'll make sense at the end of this session. So go ahead and tell me what you think. seeing a couple different answers coming in here. All right, I'm going to give everyone just a couple more minutes to get in and set up and answer that poll question. And then we will begin. All right, so in case anyone was wondering, the butterfly has won the poll. So I will let you know what that is all about at the end of our session. Um, so welcome, let me go over a couple Zoom tools and then we will begin. So uh, to interact with us today, you can use the chat feature at the bottom. Um, if you set the chat to all panelists and attendees, then everyone will be able to see your messages. Otherwise, they just come directly to me. You can also send in any questions you have through the Q&A feature as well. And today we have closed captionings on. And so if you would like to have subtitles, please, um, you can click on live transcript at the bottom and click show subtitles. And if you want to hide those, go ahead and click hide. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what Horizon Wellness Week is all about, let me tell you. So I work with Horizon Housing and we are a nonprofit housing provider here in Calgary and we serve just over 1200 Calgarians. And it's definitely been a tough year. And we wanted to find a way to bring wellness directly into the homes of Horizon residents, other people here in Calgary and really across Alberta and Canada. And so as a housing provider, we thought, how can we make this happen? And we have a partnership model where we work with over 40 different agencies here in Calgary. Um, they offer a range of supports and services. And so we have brought lots of them together for this week of wellness, um, ranging from mental health to financial wellness. We've got a yoga session. And of course, we've got Crafternoon today. Um, and so yeah, we just wanted to have the Wellness Week be really holistic, have a ton of different opportunities to increase our wellness and, and go on this journey together. So let's get started with Crafternoon. Uh, Crafternoon was born out of our idea of, you know, how can we come together and connect and enhance our social wellness at a time when we, most of us are alone at home. And we thought it'd be a really fun way to come together, have an afternoon of crafts and really just de-stress, have some fun together and really reset um, our, our positivity and really be able to grow that way. So um, today we are going to be making an origami swan and an origami box. So um, here today to help me is Tom. Tom Kenny is an avid Horizon volunteer, um, newly discovered origami lover, and my husband. That's why he is here today in person and why we are allowed to be closer than six feet without masks on. <laughs> So um, everyone who is a Horizon resident should have received their wellness kit. Inside that wellness kit, you will have received a stack of origami paper. So go ahead and grab that as we will be using it today. Now, if you don't have origami paper specifically, we have a bit of a way around that. So if you just have a normal piece of paper like this, let me, let me show you how you can make a perfect square so that you can join us for origami. So you take your piece of paper and you want to fold, you want to fold it so that the two edges are perfectly lined up there and go ahead and make a crease. So as you'll see, you'll now have this weird shape going on and that's perfectly fine. 
Now what you're gonna do is fold this top rectangle over. It doesn't matter which way. I'm gonna do it this way, it's easier for me. And again, just make sure that that lines up with um, the other side of the paper so that you're making a nice straight line. Now go ahead and use your fingernail or um, if you don't have long fingernails, you can use like a credit card or um, the back of a spoon actually works really well. Just make sure that crease is really firm. Now what you're gonna do is just fold it back over, crease it again. And um, after your first crease, you could also take scissors and cut it. Um, this is, I find this easier. You can just start your tear and just pull apart. And now you have a perfect square piece of paper. Now, don't worry about that crease. Most, most origami starts with a crease anyways. Um, now you can do this again with your second piece of paper, or you can use this as a template and just use scissors to cut your next piece of paper into a perfect square. Now, one more thing with origami that I will explain to you before we get started is there's something called mountain folds and valley folds. So if I have my piece of paper sitting here like this, you can see that I've made this crease is now facing up. So you can see how it makes a bit of a valley. Now, if I were to take my paper and fold it like this, I have now created a mountain fold. See how it's pointing up. So this is important just because um, some of our origami, we're gonna need, need to remember which crease is kind of pointed up and which is kind of pointed down. Um, but I will walk you through all of that as well. So um, I'm gonna give you all a minute to get your papers organized. And Tom and I are gonna do a little switcheroo of seats because he is gonna walk us through making the swan first. Perfect. Got my tea, got my cheat sheet because quite frankly, I'm new to this. And uh, just noticing in the chat that there are some fellow frog fans out there. I don't know what happened with the rest of you, but you made a mistake. Frogs should have one. Um, as for origami, I hope everyone who doesn't have our beautiful little pieces of paper has taken the time to square their sheet of normal paper. Because I think it's about time that we get things going and we're going to take flight with making a swan. Okay. I will adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully it's not too awkward. My hands are enormous. I apologize. Okay, so here we have our square piece of paper. What I want you to do is turn it, I believe this is 45 degrees, so that you have a diamond facing you as opposed to a square. The reason being for this is that our first fold, which will end up being the spine of our swan, is a long diagonal fold right down the middle of our square piece of paper, just like so. Okay, you see that? It just runs down. So we've effectively made a triangle. This is what Moira called a valley fold. See how we've created a large valley here? This is our goal. We want that nice crease right down the middle. Now it's important to remember with origami, while following the instructions is crucial, we don't expect perfection. No one is perfect. And with origami, you can still make beautiful things, even if your lines are not exactly where you need them to be. For our second and third folds, we're going to take the corners of our diamond and bring them towards the spine. So you see what I did there for that fold? I took this corner out on the wing here and I brought it towards the middle, okay? Once you've done that, you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Effectively, what you're doing here, for those of you who grew up flying kites, is you're gonna make something that looks akin to a kite. Nice creases along the sides there. Look at that. How cool is that? You've already made the vast majority of your swan, which I think is quite cool. Oh, very cool. Yeah. 
it do look like a kite. That's the purpose. So I'll just give everyone a second here to to fold those few things because you know everyone works at their own pace. And we want to give time here in the afternoon. And I've been thinking today a lot a lot about origami. And forgive me because I'm a little dumb, but if rock paper scissors were to be played with origami, would it always end in a tie? Because it's always because it's always paper. At the end of the day, like a rock is made of paper, the paper is made of paper, the scissors are made of paper. <laughs> I don't know. It might just be me thinking these things. I have too much time on my hands, well, apparently. I think everyone tune into um, the next crafter noon, and <laughs> we'll make origami rock paper yeah. and scissors. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so everyone has their kites now, I assume. Hopefully no one is stumped in thought by that really terrible question. Uh, we're going to flip our kite over. Okay, so if you have a patterned piece of paper, your pattern side will be showing or the vacant side will be showing. Okay, and now what you're gonna do is replicate that same fold only on this side of the paper. So you see how you have that long crease that you made for the very first time? You're gonna take this corner again now and bring this corner around into the middle, okay? So you're more or less doing the exact same thing just on the other side. And it should fold over nice and easy. And re again, remember your folds don't need to be perfect. No one here is a professional origamiist. And if they are, I expect them to speak up in chat because what are you doing hiding and not hosting this session? Okay, so we've made our first fold. Look at that. We're basically narrowing down our little kite here. And then you're gonna take the time to go ahead and do that exact same fold, this time on the other side. Okay, here we go. Look at that. How cool is that? I made mine a little too deep there, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter because it's all gonna turn into a bird at the end of the day. And believe it or not, once you make these two folds, we're basically almost done the swamp. Wow, this is, uh, this is yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's moving along pretty quickly. And I learned today that there was a swan. No, it was a, what's the other bird that gets made? The crane. There was a paper crane made in 1999 that was, it weighed something like 1,750 pounds and was like 215 feet wide. It's crazy. I like, I don't know if they used lots of paper or one paper, but it was a lot of paper. paper. RIP trees. So after you've narrowed down your kite, you've made these folds towards the center. What you're gonna do is find a point in the middle, I'm gonna say like roughly here, and take this part and fold it up along the middle again, just like so, okay? Do you see what I've done there? I've taken the kite and I've just folded that along the middle, okay? Those visionaries in the chat will be able to see that we are crafting the neck of the bird with this fold. You people who are seeing four folds ahead, the Magnus Carlsons of origami, you know what I'm talking about. I know you're in there, just holler. Okay, once you've made that fold right in the middle, you're gonna make another fold. I'm gonna say right about here this time, right here on your neck, okay? You're just going to take the tip of it and fold it down again. Okay, so after you've made that fold, look at that. Is that beginning to look like something to you? It's beginning to look like something to me, and that something is paper. It hasn't really changed. Okay, I'll give you guys some time to do those folds there. We had just had a comment come yeah. up. Yeah. Can you redo the last two folds? Um, of it course. went a little bit fast. Of course, okay. So once we flipped over our little kite, so we were here, right? We flipped it over, then we brought the corners in once again, this time just on the other side of that kite, okay? And then we have the length of our kite here, right? It runs all this way around, around the middle section here. You're just gonna take it and fold it upwards like so, okay? Now, it doesn't need to be a specific length. 
you can make it, I, I wouldn't go much higher than this. Otherwise your bird will have a weirdly long neck and a weirdly small body. But you know, we value all birds of shapes and sizes made of paper in this chat. And if you really want to do that, power to you. And then you fold it in half again in the midpoint here. See that? So we took it from this to this to this. Okay, so we've more or less made a little Z. All right. And once you've made that little Z, what I like to do here, because remember that first fold that we made way back in the beginning, way back in the beginning, see that? Our kite, that one right down the middle, that eventually becomes the spine of our broody. Maybe just do it one more time really quick and then- we'll Of course, of course, of course. So one more time, we turned our kite over that we originally made and we took this corner and we put it in the middle. You see that? And then we took this corner and we put that one in the middle. Okay, now our kite is narrower, much narrower. From here, you found a middle point and you bent it in half, upwards like so. Okay, and once you did that, you bent it in half once again, this time the opposite direction, more or less creating a little Z. Once you have this, what you'll be able to do is pinch your paper together and crease it all as one big thing. Look at that. See, it all sits nice, nice together. Really nice, nice. And in fact, if you leave it, it stands on its own. Now, once you've made these two folds and you've creased it once again, this is the only part where it gets a little sketchy. So if you've made it this far, you're doing great. Everyone is doing great. Origami is just for fun. We do it at our own pace. Once you're here, you grab it, right like that. And you have to more or less manhandle your origami a bit. Because what you're doing is you're getting the neck of your bird to stand up on its own. See that? We've made a little neck. And then you're gonna do the same thing for your little beak. This is the only part of the process where you're not actually folding anything. You're just kind of pulling. So again, you saw that we started down here. Everything was nice and tight. All you do is you pull gently on this little neck joint here, up like so. And then you pull gently on the little head, just like that. And then once that's done, you can kind of fluff out the little wings. And you have a swan. Look at that. See, I have a bit of a long beaked swan. Like the head of my swan is almost as long as its neck. But darn, if it don't look pretty. And no matter which paper you're using, the white paper, the origami paper, whether it's psychedelic or floral, all of your birds are pretty. All of you did a great job. I'm sure of it. Because all of you are wonderful people for being here at Craft Afternoon, and you deserve beautiful swans. Wow. And well, Tom, I think that was really awesome. Yeah, hey, look at that. Look at our little birdie. Yeah, that was, that was wonderful. And part of why we wanted to do craft afternoon is that crafts are, are such a great way to just relax mm -hmm. and you know learn a new skill. Um, and you know, flex those brain muscles. I know mm -hmm. um, it was definitely a learning curve for us. Um, so, like we said, craft afternoon is not about perfection. It's about just having some fun time together to learn something new. Yeah. So um, we've sent some instructions in the chat. So if you want to go back and try another swan later, please feel free to, free to do so. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, really great way to relax and calm. And really, all you need to make this craft is a piece of paper. Yeah. So and it's it's really easy. This is the third swan that I have made. You know, and if I can do it blindfolded orangutan can do it really i i truly believe in all of you like in no time at all you too will have a flock like mine and be proud of them <laughs> i certainly hope you will be it's just a lot of fun it's good to fold paper and now that we've made a swan i'm going to pass things over to moira who's going to show you how to make a little box which is very cute yeah cute little box 
Okay, switch room. Take my tea. It's always better to craft with tea. I'm not going to judge you if you're crafting with other liquids. Yeah, Tom and I are both having a cup of tea. Uh, if you're a Horizon resident, you will have received um, some tea in your wellness kit as well. So feel free to uh, to make a cup of tea after this, or maybe you don't want to make a box, so you can go do that now. <laughs> All right. Grab my papers here. Okay. So the box. This one's pretty fun. Um, and Tom, just maybe keep an eye on the chat in case right, we need so to go moving. slower. Okay, so I'm going to tilt this down so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so if you have a piece of origami paper, or maybe if you've decided to take the time during this one to color a pretty picture on your piece of paper, you could do that too. Um, you're going to put that side facing down. You want to have um, the, the solid side facing up. Um, whichever side you have facing down is going to be the outside of your box. So the first thing we're going to do is make a fold, a mountain fold directly in the middle. So we want that popping up. So go ahead and do that. Now, I like to try to line my corners up as best I can. It's never perfect for me, but that's, that's what crafting is about, is doing your best and having fun. I'm going to make sure that all my creases are nice. I'm going to use my fingernail, but like I said, you can use a credit card or a spoon. Um, okay, so now you see we've got one mountain fold in the middle. What you're going to go do is do another one of those like this, so that you've got a T or a cross of mountain folds. So you can also fold it up to um, line up your corners. Sometimes that's a little easier for my eyes to focus on. Mm -hmm. And remember, if you need us to slow down or go over a fold again, you just need to ask us in chat. We're monitoring it very actively. And just while Moira is making that fold there, did you guys know that the grandmaster of modern origami created over 50,000 origami models and developed the folding methods that we are using today? Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now you'll have two mountain folds. You can see it forms a little, a little T in the middle there. Now, you're going to make two valley folds. And those are going to be going diagonally across. So bring the corner to the corner and make a valley fold. So again, I lift it up just to make sure my corner is nice and aligned. Again, you don't have to be perfect, but try to make those line up as best you can. All right, see mine is not perfectly aligned there, but that is a-okay. So now you'll see I've got those, those mountain folds that are sticking up and I've got this valley fold running down the middle. Now you're gonna do another one from the other corners. Valley fold, so fold it like this. You've got your colorful side facing up. This is probably a little easier to follow if you have the patterned paper, like all the Horizon residents and the ones that Moira and I have. So Moira, after you've done these folds, why don't you go over those cold folds again? This one you want to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so what if you don't have a colorful piece of paper to help guide you, what you really want to have is um, two folds facing up that are um, horizontal and vertical. And then you're going to have two folds that are diagonal. So you have your piece of paper. You did one fold sort of like a hamburger. And then you did another fold like a hot dog. Okay, so those are your folds that are pointed up. Now you did two triangle folds of the corners so that it was facing down, like the corner, the corners came up, the ridge is now down. You can see how that's making the cor corners come together. And you're gonna do it again on this side. Okay. So now when you lay your paper flat, you'll see that you've got those, the T is a ridge is pointed up and the crosses, the X's are facing, or the ridges are kind of pointed down as you can kind of see. Now, this next one, I'm gonna go over a couple of times. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your paper in half, but you see these two ridges that are kind of popping up on the sides here? You're going to bring those together as you fold it over. So as you can see, you've got those two facing up. 
You're going to bring them together. And then you're going to fold your paper over. Now I will go over that again after I crease my corners out. See, I didn't, my lines did not add up correctly. And if yours don't either, that's totally fine. Just smooth it out once you get there. That's, that'll be good. Okay. So you have. What do you do after the triangle folds? That's what we're doing right now. So yeah. I'll go over it again. So you've, you've got your fold. So you're going to take these, these two on the, see how the sides are kind of pointed up. You're going to bring them together and then fold your paper down. See. Yeah, I know I had, to, I had to do it backwards, but so, so you've got your square, you're bringing these um, two folds that are pointing up together and then you are folding it down. So you're going to end with a triangle. Okay, so there we go. So now you have a triangle, yay. Remember, flatten out those creases. Um, if you're feeling ridges, just smooth them out. While you guys are doing those, that little bit of a complicated fold, did you know, I'm hitting you with fun facts today. This is part of my task. Did you know that in 2003, the British Origami Society got over 1,550 train cars delivered to them, made in origami from around the world, from many different countries, and they made a train that was over 254 meters long. This, however, was not given a world record because Guinness said it was too specific. An interesting fact. Yeah. Okay, this next fold, um, you see how on your triangle you've got these little wings. You're gonna take the first wing and you're gonna bring the corner and you're gonna match the corner up right at the top. So let me show you that. So you have your triangle, you're gonna take this corner and fold it up so it matches the top corner and then flatten it out. And you're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So you're gonna take your little corner and bring it all the way up to the top where it matches the top corner and you're gonna flatten it out. Okay, so now as you can see, you took those two flaps and brought them up to the top. Now, I'm gonna show you again because the next folds are, you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So you're gonna see your flap, you're gonna bring it up to the top corner there, line it up with the top corner and flatten it out. So take your corner, match it up to the top and there you go. And then do the exact same thing on this side. So you've now brought all, you've now made your triangle into a square. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go over that again. So I have a triangle. I'm bringing my first flap up to the top corner and smoothing it out. I'm bringing the next flap up to the top corner, flattening it out, turn it over. <laughs> And do the same thing. That is a great question, Taylor. No, this is not a fortune teller. We are going to be making a box. It looks like this at the end. It's very cool. It's very cool. Okay, so now you've got your all your corners up at the top. As you can see, this side has the, the tips at the top and this side has all of your folds. So you want to make sure that for the next folds you keep these little flaps up at the top. So our next step is we're going to bring oh and as you can see um you kind of have that these these folds down the middle um so what you're going to do is lay it down like a diamond and you're going to bring this first corner and you're going to bring it to meet the center so let me hold that up and show it to you so with your tips facing up you're going to bring the corner and bring it into that center. You see the center is right where you've got a split. And so you're just gonna line up the, the corner with this line here. And you're gonna do the same on the other side. So bringing one side, lining the corner up with that center line and making that crease. So you've brought 
two corners into the middle. Ooh. Now you're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. <laughs> so. Thank goodness all the holes are pretty similar. So you're gonna bring this corner over. So now you can see you've only got one side left. And you're going to bring it into the middle. Okay, and then you're going to fold the other side into the middle as well. Okay. Why don't we go over those one more time just yeah. so we can see it. So you had your diamond. You have your tip space in the top. You're gonna bring this corner and you're gonna fold it into the center so that it matches up right with that center line. You're gonna do the same on the other side. So this corner is gonna come right to the center. So as you can see, we've brought those right together. The corners are touching. You have this weird shape. I'm gonna flip it over. And you're gonna do the gonna do the same thing. So the corner comes in to meet the center, and this corner comes in to meet the center as well. So I'll give everybody a chance to catch up here. Um, but uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, crafting is a really great way to exercise self-care. And, you know, we're, we're all, this is a tough time for everybody right now. And it's, you know, it's been a year and self-care is really, really important. And so take the time, you know, make 10 minutes and do one origami every day or <laughs> pick up some knitting needles and do that. Find something that you love and just make sure you're taking time to care for yourself. Um, <laughs> Big fingers, little paper. Yeah, the paper does get very little eventually with origami. I will, I will say that the smaller fingers is helpful, but um, <laughs> like I said, if the origami paper is feeling too small, get a big piece of paper and make it into a square and yeah. make a ginormous box. Make a, make a big box. Okay, so you've got this weird shape. Let's all make sure that your the tips, those flaps are pointed up. So see how this side has all these little pieces of paper pointing up and this side has none of them. Make sure this is facing up at the top. Okay, now what you're gonna do is, as you can see, you have these little flaps. So there's gonna be two up top here on this side, and there's two up top here on the other side. And then there's this like big triangle in the middle. So what you're gonna do is take this first flap and you're gonna fold it over to come meet the other corners in the very middle. Okay. So you took that flap and you folded it over and it's now touching mm -hmm. these corners. And you guessed it, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. <laughs> so we'll bring that tip down and see how there's now a solid triangle at the back. That's good. You're gonna fold that down. I'm sorry, I need to put it down for a second. And you're gonna bring that corner to meet. Mm -hmm. So now this is what you should see. So you have the corners that you brought over from the last step. And then you just brought your flap directly down into the middle. <laughs> and you brought this one right down into the middle too. Now, flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. <laughs> the box is very, very cool and very repetitive, which I actually enjoy. It's kind of nice to have something to do that's just, you know, kind of making the same folds over and over. And it, it's really, it can calm your mind um, so I know that I'm going to be using origami every time I feel a little overwhelmed or maybe I'm, I'm feeling anxious about something. I'm going to come and make my origami box as a great way to kind of slow my mind down, have a little bit of a, a chance to reflect and, um, and do that. So yeah, it's a really great way to just focus, you know? So you took this top flap and you're bringing it down to meet in the middle and you're going to do the same with this guy. Or this is obviously a, a great way to connect with people too. Um, you know, you can get your family together and you can teach them origami. Um, you can get together and all try to learn a new origami um, at the same time. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, Tom and I have only practiced this a couple times. And so, you know, we're, we'll, we're still fairly new. And as you can see, like my full tier is not you know, matching up perfectly, that's okay. But it's a great way, you know, um, we can learn different different things on the, on the go together. So there we go. So now you've got 
this guy, you've got those two folds and two folds. That's looking great. Now, the next step is a little bit confusing. So uh, bear with me here. I'm gonna do it many times, so don't worry. Okay, so as you can see on your little guy, these triangle folds, you just fold it over. This fold actually opens up like this. So I'll show you on this side too. So you see this, this bigger triangle that you made? It actually comes apart. And if you're struggling to get it to come apart, a good tip is to use a pen. So you can see that there. Now, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do and then I'm gonna show you a little tip. We're gonna put this corner into the pocket. <laughs> so before we do that, here's what I've learned is actually very helpful. Oh, a paper clip is also a great idea. And that way, that way you don't get pen marks on your beautiful origami paper. So you're gonna take this corner and you're gonna just fold it over. And it doesn't need to be a super hard crease, but it, it does make it helpful. So see what I did there? So I have my flap, I just pushed it over. Now what we're gonna do is unfold it, open up your pocket, and now see, I made that fold to fold it over so that it would be a little easier for me to push it in. So now what we're gonna do is just tuck it in and then you can just kind of bend it down as you go. So now nice. my little flap that was here, I'll undo it. Actually, I'm gonna show you on the other side because it's a little hard to undo. Okay, so you took this corner and you folded it over top like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you just made a little fold. Unfold it. Take your bigger triangle here. Yeah, we folded that triangle a while back, didn't we? Open up, open up the little pocket. You'll see which one it is because it has a little pocket. And then just put that corner right into the pocket. Oh, and see mine's getting a little bit stuck. A good tip is just give it a little wiggle. and it'll go in. Okay, so as you can see, there we go. Doesn't need to be perfect. This side is a little bit worse than the other side, but that's okay. So you've now tucked that into your corners. Just give it a nice little press or run it with your fingernail. There we go. Okay. This is a really good time to reflect on how good it is. It's wild. Who thought folding paper this much? Whoever invented this is crazy. How would you know that all of this would turn into a box? People were bored in the Middle Ages. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> okay, so other side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So again, you've got this fold, you're gonna fold it over. Then you're gonna open up your pocket with either, by either squeezing, using a paper clip, using a pen, you're just gonna get it open. And you're gonna tuck this guy right in. Go to sleep. Go to sleep corner. <laughs> and don't worry, we are gonna send a link with instructions to the box at the end of this. <laughs> so that you can teach other people and then keep practicing yourself. So we tucked that corner right in. Again, on the other side, fold it over, unfold it, open up your pocket, and tuck it in. That was the hardest move by far, and we're almost there, I promise. I'm gonna give everyone a second to catch up um, with all of their pockets. I know they can be a little hard to get open at times, and it's a little, you know, confusing. And uh, so, Tom, do you have any other fun origami facts for us? 
I mean, I'm loaded with facts. Do you guys know that they've done origami in space? In I mean, space? I mean, it, it shouldn't be that surprising. I feel like it was the same motivation that they had back in the Middle Ages or whenever they started making origami. Uh, there's probably not that much to do in the ISS. So they made something very similar to this. It wasn't, it wasn't a box. It was like a, it was like a balloon. It was like a big ball. And, uh, yeah, they did that back in 2003, the crew of the ISS, the International Space Station. Okay. So once you've got all of those pockets together, here is a very fun part that we're going to do. So. You know, this side, this side is the side we tucked those pockets in. The other side, this side is what you're going to use. I'm actually going to turn the camera off now. Yeah, okay. this is all the complicated folding. Has you're done this. folding. You have completed all of your folds. This is a big deal. So again, this is the side that I put, um, tucked those little guys into their corners. As you can see on this side, you can see a little bit of like a, a hole. What you're gonna do <laughs> is blow into your origami. So this side had the had the folds, the corners tucked in. The opposite side. Now this comes with varying degrees of success. Now, sometimes it, <laughs> it blows up very nicely and sometimes it doesn't. So if don't that's okay, don't lose, don't lose hope. All you have to do is kind of pull your corners apart a little bit. I like to push these little guys together. See, pushing the corners out. I'm kind of forcing it. It didn't blow up as, as well. And that usually happens when your corners aren't matched up. So mine weren't. And now I'm going to give it another one. And I mean, it, it it worked out okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's you know it's not the best box in the world, but I still had a ton of fun with you guys. And uh, oh, you know yeah. I'm gonna practice and get better. But as you can see, this one's a little wonky. This one, you know, the corners, you know, were a little a little a little cleaner. Um, but you know it's still cool. Yeah. Um, you can use this to throw around with your kids. Um, you can use it as a desk decoration. Yeah. And um, you know. <laughs> Okay. Mine is more. <laughs> People are saying they've got some weird shapes going on. That's all good. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I was going to say about crafting is that um, it can be a really great gift for people. Um, you know, you get to spend the time working on your own self care and taking a little bit of a mental break. And then you get to give something really beautiful to someone else. Mm -hmm. Now, the balloon is not a COVID safe gift to give because we've yeah. just put our mouths yeah. all over don't, the paper. Don't, don't give your freshly made balloon to anyone. So I would recommend only gifting this to someone in your immediate household. So Tom, I would like to gift you with my box. <laughs> Do thank you like you. it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for this wonderful origami I'm, gift. I'm gonna keep um, I'm gonna keep the better box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna keep my my swans because okay. I'm creating you know, a herd. Okay. I don't know what a group of swans is called, but they're for me. So thank you for your gift. I will not reciprocate. And um, <laughs> we're going to throw the link to the balloon origami in the chat here. It's already up there. Oh, I perfect. Put it in when people were asking. Thank you, Thomas. All right. Now, I know we did a weird poll at the very beginning in terms of whether you preferred frogs or butterflies. And the butterflies did win out. But uh, so we're going to send a link to some butterfly origami that you can go ahead and make right now or save for later. And um, Tom, why don't we throw the, the frog link in there too? Because oh. there, was, there was some pretty adamant frog, frog, frog lovers in, in this chat. group. So Let's we will we'll throw in both. Um, yeah. If you are a Horizon resident, um, please send me a photo of how your origami turned out. Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat here. And um, if you do that and let me know what you've learned from Wellness Week or if you had a favorite moment, maybe it was attempting origami with me, um, but send me that and photo and you'll be entered twice into a draw to win a $100 grocery gift card. So my email is gonna be in the chat in just a second here and um, go ahead and do that. 
Um, if you are not a Horizon resident, you can go ahead and share a photo of your origami on any of our social channels using the hashtag, hashtag Horizon Wellness Week. And um, I'm just going to pause if there's any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we will wrap up here in a second. And I would just like to address the enthusiastic person at the beginning of this chat who asked if you could make a frog with butterfly wings. You sure can. If you try hard enough, I believe in you. I'm not going to do I it. I would love to see yeah, a photo if you, of that. If you succeed to polymorph those things together, please send a picture of your wonderful origami to the Uh That would be incredible. Um, I put my email in the chat there again. Now, last things before we wrap up. Um, we are going to have a survey. I'm going to post the link in the chat and it'll also pop up in your in your browser once we end this meeting. It'll have a button that says continue and you can click that to go to the survey as well. We really appreciate your feedback. This is Horizon's first ever wellness week and so we'd love to hear what's going well for you, what you'd like to see, you know, if we do this in the future and if you have any um, other comments, we would love to hear them. Again, if you are a Horizon resident, this is how you are going to be entered to win um, a craft pack of origami. So um, if you fill out that survey, let us know that you're a Horizon resident, fill out your information, and we are going to do a draw for a craft pack. So um, that's pretty exciting as well. Lots of chances to win prizes mm -hmm. here at Horizon. So the link for the survey is in the chat there. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today for Crafternoon. And um, I hope you enjoyed bring this origami to as many people as you want. <laughs> and so stay healthy, stay safe, have a great night. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.